Greetings Mac Warriors, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is TTB speaking and welcome back to German Mac Engineering. And today guys we are playing the Firestarter 9K in a full-on medium pulse and small laser configuration because I thought to myself this thing looks neat. Let's slap a bunch of lasers on that thing and see what we can do. So let's jump right into the build here. The basis for this build is going to be an XL245 engine, uh, very important 245, not 240. They have the same weight, but the 245 is a little bit faster. You can't go with the 250 due to weight constraints here. Now we're adding two jump jets. So we have a little bit of jump capability, but not too much, just enough to get us around 14.8 jump distance. Then we have two medium pulses in the center torso and three medium pulses in the right arm, as well as three small lasers in the left arm. Now, if you just go medium pulses here, if you basically go Urban Mech Armaments, uh, Arm plus CT, then uh, you can go with an XL250 engine here. However, if you go with the 245, you can add those three small lasers and uh, add a little bit of damage on top, almost 10 damage to your Alpha Strike. So I thought to myself, what if I actually make use of all the energy hard points in this thing let's go ahead and try it out on top of that we have three heat sinks two in the right torso one in the left torso it doesn't really matter if you lose a side torso you're dead anyways because you're running an xl engine so make sure to be twisting a lot and since you are only a 35 ton light mech don't get shot as much is the best tip i can give you <laughs> literally don't make yourself a target um now let's go ahead and have a look at the skill tree because there are some skills in here that are complementary to this build and that will help with that as well. So, for the fire pottery, this might look a little bit weird, but there is method to my madness. First and foremost, we have laser duration, all the laser duration nodes, as well as a lot of the heat gen nodes down here. In fact, we have all the heat gen nodes and all the range nodes. What I don't have is all the cooldown nodes because I figured I don't really need that cooldown that much. Uh, I don't mind if I have like a 0.1 second longer cooldown on my medium pulses. What I want them to be is reach further and be more heat efficient. And with this build, our medium pulse lasers will reach 275 meters optimal range and a maximum range of 550 meters. So that is significant because that means we have basically normal medium laser range with the medium pulses and the small lasers they will reach out uh, optimal range 187 and max range 375 so again guys we have just increased the area of where we can actually do alpha strikes properly to about yeah i would say 300 ish meters yeah so yeah, well basically 270 and below is where you can safely alpha and of course the best damage you will be able to do at 187 and below. But uh, of course be careful when you get that close because uh, running away is not going to be as easy. You don't have ECM, you don't have stealth and you're only 113.4 kph fast. Now let's have a look at the survival tree real quick. Um, survival tree left hand side, we get cell density, we get... Um, uh, one point of skeletal density down here and the rest is just armor hardening and all the nodes that are required to get down here to 9 and 10 in armor hardening. Nothing in mobility or jump jets, nothing in operations, full sensor tree for seismic and radar derp. Radar derp, very important, you don't want to get learned to death or ATM to death or streak to death or if anything can home in on you, it will, so go ahead and get that. Make sure you be able, you're able to drop those locks by just hiding behind a building. Um, and of course, keep in mind, this doesn't change the fact that if you are standing under a UAV, you are going to have a bad day. And then last but not least, Auxiliary Tree. Now with this one, I actually decided to go uh, double Kusha with Kushat cooldown. And I recommend you guys consider going double UAV. And if you don't go double UAV, at least take one UAV with you and then invest the other points somewhere else. But I found that UAV can be quite beneficial, especially if you're fighting 1v1 and you're uh, dealing, for example, with a King Crab. Um, I wonder why I'm saying that. Hmm, there might be a reason for that coming in the video. But um, yeah, it's really helpful for your teammates to A, always know where the enemy is at. And of course, B, to send some long range love your way and help you out in the uh, duel against said king crab so uh, that being said that is the build for today guys let's go ahead and take this little fire starter into a match and see how it performs let's jump into the dropship i'll see you there 
Welcome to the Tormodan Desert everybody here in our Firestarter 9k and uh, we're slowly walking through Death Valley We've actually come across the uh, top side of it now right, and we're looking towards the central castle And I'm seeing targets so I'm doing an artillery strike there as you can see this is an earlier version of the build Where I didn't bring any kind of UAV yet Now looking at this desert let me tell you guys it is a desert like heat right now in Germany uh, We're approaching 34 or 35 degrees and uh, we might be approaching 40 40-ish degrees centigrade this week so um, long story short I was rendering this video uh, or pre-rendering this video and I was looking at my CPU and it's like yep we are approaching 85 degrees centigrade uh, we are basically able to start making our tea with that CPU so it might be it might be time to uh, remove the overclock at least for a few days and see what happens here okay enough about that um, let's go ahead and see what we can do over here the enemy team is still in the castle my guys uh, some of them especially assaults are still sitting in Echo 7, hopefully sitting pretty and doing damage. So let's go ahead and try and find some targets here. We've got a Zeus around the corner. Can we actually shoot through this little hole here? Hello? Okay, never mind. Can't see. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just holding position here. I don't want to go in on my own. Uh, that would be suicidal. But with a linebacker going in, we can go ahead and try and help to do some damage. Onto that enemy Cyclops. He's a streak boat. Guys, if I had went in there, I'd be dead. Glad to see that I got a little bit of battlefield sense and glad to see it actually works out for me. So let's go ahead and take down that Cyclops. That was XL? Why would you XL a Cyclops? Preposterous, especially for that build because it runs without XL. But okay, never mind. Let's go ahead and go into the enemy Mad Dog. Uh, missed the shot here because my teammates take him down earlier. But uh, luckily, we don't go into the part of the override that will start cooking your internals. So be very careful and be very mindful with your heat management for this mech because it can run quite hot quite quickly. So you gotta be a little bit careful and gotta have a good trigger discipline. We've got a Centurion down there, we've got a Zeus there with MRMs, UAC 5, and the side torso is open so let's go ahead and do a jump shot and maybe maybe dish enough damage to this guy to nope never mind wrong side i think but it's okay let's go ahead and go into that hunchback deal some damage to your side torso and ct go in potentially for the kill uh here we go well i took away his arm i didn't take the side torso unfortunately accuracy wasn't there but that's all right we do some more damage to the enemy zeus and try to scare him away without killing my teammates Ooh, again, into the override, but just that little smidgen before it actually goes ahead and cooks your internals. Again, guys, trigger discipline. It's very important. Okay, I see an Arctic Wolf. I just got shot in the back by a teammate, and my pristine CT turned into orange. <sighs> don't know how I feel about that, guys. Well, I do know how I feel about that. I just don't know how to properly articulate it with this video without this video getting demonetized. So let's go ahead and try and do some more damage to the enemy Zeus from before. Open up his CT and uh, one or two more shots will do the deed here. I've got an Irby with me and uh, with the arms unlocked and the Irby helping. There we go. We take out another kill onto the enemy Zeus. Now, as you can see there, sometimes you just have to unlock your arms and then you just use your three small lasers and five uh, medium pulses to shoot at the target with a uh, three small plus three medium pulses laser volley and then the two medium pulses from the CT. You could also think about moving the medium pulses um, to the arms as well. That's definitely an option and it will be a little bit more vulnerable but on the other side of things you will be able to hit targets better so it's a, it's a trade-off so I'll leave that up to you guys. Now Seven kills to eight, guys. It is very, very close right now. But I still have the Irby with me, and that is just an onion. And the onion is mighty, but not mightier than an urban mech and a fire starter combined. So let's go ahead and try and get him here from the side. Unfortunately, he did a good job twisting and not peeking. But uh, that's all right. We are chasing him down with jump jets. Irby power and TTP power combined. And this guy should be dead here in a second or so. There we go. Rip. Beautiful. So, what else do we have here? We have a Centurion and something else, and that Centurion seems to like me very, very much. My CT is very red. I still have my armor on the front, mostly, but uh, I'm not feeling good right now. His CT is very damaged, though. Maybe we can get the kill here? Nope, we can't. We got killed by an AC-20 shell. Um, I would go ahead, uh, go on the record, say that, guys, had I not been shot in the back by my teammate, I would have lived through that, but uh, it doesn't matter. In the end, the team pulls out the win, 12 kills over 9. Uh, TTP thinking about writing a snarky message to somebody who shot me from behind, but then thinking about... Ah, it's not worth it. So, two killing blows, eight assists, 487 damage done, five components destroyed. I would say that's a solid round in a light mech with an experimental build. I kind of like it. 
and I uh, kind of want to play it a little bit more to see what it can do. Also, big shout out to the Irby that was a solid and stalwart partner in brawling down all Our these targets, on. and Our both of us out damaged all of the assaults, so <laughs> we're good. <laughs> okay, jumping into the next match here, we are on Frozen City Classic, and uh, I'm trying to see if I can get behind the enemy team and uh, do some damage from there, maybe squirrel away a few targets, but uh, it all depends on how hard my team actually wants to engage here. Now, it's a little bit weird to be all alone in Bravo 4, but I guess um, like e even though it is captured with uh, all of those nice flags out here, it feels weird that there's nobody here. Ex something's fishy. Something is definitely fishy. My artillery strike is hitting a few targets, that's nice, and then we see this. Hello, Mr. King Crab. Okay, it's a 682 King Crab. I have no idea what he's doing at this point in time, at this part of the map, but uh, for some reason he's here. So, we're gonna try and deal with him, and the problem is, um, I can't really engage him for a prolonged amount of time, and I'm in a spot where I can't really engage from more than two angles, which is not good, because that makes this whole situation very uncomfortable. I also am not fast enough to just run around behind him all the time, but what I can do is wait for him to make a move, and then once he makes his move, we go ahead and we attack, for example, right now onto his back side torso. Okay. Now, I'm thinking he's probably going to turn around here, but that's alright, we're just going to go ahead, give a quick peek, get a shot to target, and try and get back to cover. Yeah, I can't eat that many shots of him, every shot uh, that he does on any kind of component of mine does 12 damage, and if he does that twice or three times, that component is gone. So again, guys, we are just in a light mech. However, what we're doing right now is we're using 35 tons to keep 100 tons occupied, so right now, on paper, this is a win for my team. A net win for my team, or a, a, a net benefit to my team. Okay, so here is the situation, guys, where the UAV would have been insanely helpful to know where the enemy king crab is, and then you would be able to go in on him. I don't have seismic on this one either, so uh, can't tell where he's at. So I just have to try and guess and then engage like a madman into a king crab, but that's all right. We just keep poking the bear 24 7 until the bear uh, <laughs> might actually kill me. I can't say. Oh, there, the bear is coming for me. He's coming right for me. And my poor, poor right arm is taking the damage. That is painful. Oh, and now he's got a friend. All right. So not, now we don't fight against 100 tons. Now we fight against, what is it, 165, 170? I don't know. I can't tell. The only thing I can tell you guys is that I have to run and try and kite these guys out a little bit at least. So uh, we're screwing about two enemies right now. The problem is, looking at the scoreboard, that the enemy team can actually afford it right now because they are two kills in the lead. They had been three kills in the lead just a few seconds ago. And I'm still trying to dodge and lead them away. Let's see. Can we hide behind here? Okay, King Crab is still coming from me. It's like a dog that's following me around on a leash. It's uh, kind of kind of fun, but also depressing at the same time. Um, six kills, two seven. All right, get a volley into the rifleman. Oh, his CT is open. So I'm thinking here maybe, maybe I can get the kill. But unfortunately, he went up the hillside, and he's got arms, and I I just got small lasers in the arms though. And I've also got a King Crab wailing away on me. So I'm trying to get the kill on the rifleman, but unfortunately, as you can see, we're about five damage short. We're about five damage short from killing the rifleman. So in in the in the two on one of 175 tons against 35 tons, this time unfortunately, due to me not playing it optimally, I lost. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm seeing this as a partial win based on how long we were able to engage this kind of tonnage and not die. So. Problem is, of course, uh, looking at the way the rest of the match is gonna go, I can already tell that this is not going to be a win that Orion 2C, uh, by the way, is a Lurm boat. Um, would have been nice to have Lurm support, but then again, I would have maybe gotten Lurm support if I had a UAV, so keep that in mind. Uh, good thing to maybe run UAVs in light mechs, especially if you're going for side sweeps or uh, side sting operations. But well, the Lurm boat finally falls, and the enemy team wins 6 kills, 2-12. It's an okay match though, guys, and uh, we had an okay showing in our fire starter. 0 kills, 2 assists, 644 damage done, so nothing that you would need to hide with. And again, we out-damaged all the assaults again and everybody on our team, so I guess it's okay. And guys, if you enjoyed this content, check out my Patreon page and help keeping this content alive. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.